Welcome back to the lab. Welcome back to EE for everyone. Let's say you have a bunch of capacitors, like 96 unique capacitor values, and you put them in a bucket and you need to figure out which one's which. And let's say we weren't talking about capacitors and we were talking about inductors. I mean, these don't have the ability to measure inductance. And sure, we could DIY something and sure, we could buy a decent meter from... I don't know, I'm sure Agilent, Keysight, all the big players, I'm sure they've all got LCR meters. But there's something that I saw, and I just couldn't resist. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to break this thing out. Uh, we're going to see what we got in the box and just kind of get general feel for how it seems. They even included a battery. <laughs> <laughs> this packaging aside, um, I've heard this meter is actually pretty great. It's the DE5000. So I just want to go through and test some known inductances. Um, I'll quit wrestling with this plastic, and then once I'm done, hopefully the audio won't be too bad. Let's talk a little bit, like, why would anybody ever need something like this? Like, what is the point of this kind of a meter? And, yeah, it's made to measure inductances capacitances if I'm lucky might even be better than that so the thing that I love about LCR meters is that it usually lets you measure something that would only be a parasitic component most of the time like if you want to measure the parasitic resistance of an inductor or the parasitic resistance of a capacitor typically an LCR meter will allow you to do that and that's this LS L, P, C, S, C, P, R, S, R, P. That's inductor series, inductor parallel, capacitor series, capacitor parallel. Let's you measure all kinds of good stuff. Pointing back to something we did in the past, right? If you go back to our second half of the UPS project, we stopped trying to use off-the-shelf inductors and transformers. We started winding our own, and we started winding in my opinion, some pretty decent ones. But we didn't have a great way to verify that the component values were correct. Like, I couldn't verify how much uh, parasitic capacitive coupling there was from the primary to secondary side. I couldn't verify that the inductance of the inductors was correct. And so I was just going based on my calculations, really, my calculations and my simulation and trusting that I counted correctly <laughs> when I was winding those things manually. And if I'm being honest, that's just not great. Like, we should really make a point to ensure that values are correct before we start soldering things together and really trying to use them. So I'm not here to comment on the build quality of this thing. I'm not here to comment on actually a few things that you may care about, but there's not, like, this isn't meant to be a review. This is just, you know, an engineer's perspective of, do I think this meter is good enough to be useful? Well, I guess maybe that is a review. Is that a review? I guess that's a review. Well, this will be very preliminary and expect to see this thing come up in a lot of our future videos. So this should be a 10 puff um, cap. I'm just going to go ahead and set this DMM into uh, the... Uh, it's probably not going to be very accurate here. What in the world? <laughs> if I touch this cap, it does not change the measurement. Okay, so this meter's out. How about this one? Got it hooked up. This one didn't notice the 10 puff. All right, this one's out. How about this one? <laughs> I'm tempted to try that LCR auto button. Oh my goodness. Auto LCR, why the heck not? Go for it. Let's see if you can get this part right. I'm going to grab it and pull it off the bench because the bench might throw off the measurement. Look at that. 12 and a half puff. That's probably even within 
tolerance. It says within 10%. So yeah, but it's probably better than that. But hey, we can actually measure it. That's cool. It looks like it tested at one kilohertz. Uh, let's hit the frequency button. Now it's testing at 10 kilohertz, 100 kilohertz. You can see, that's great. That's fantastic. All right, I'll drop that one back into the bucket. So small capacitances and um, like electrolytic caps. These are going to be a lot more useful for that. Oh, I think I have some electrolytics laying around. We want to do a capacitor replacement on a power supply. Oh, I might. I think I might have thrown away the bad caps, but oh, that would have been great if I didn't compare the, uh, yeah, so look at that, 7.9 puff, still doing great. What if I hit the ESR button? I think this is ESR right up top. There we go. Now this is going to be neat. Let's shift our focus to some caps that are less ideal because most folks that are watching probably know that ceramic caps are one of the closest things that we can get to an ideal cap as far as parasitic inductance and as far as um, uh, parasitic resistance. They're pretty fantastic. They're expensive, but they're pretty fantastic. So what about if we test these 1500 mic and 2200 mic electrolytics as well as this 3.3 mic film cap. What are we going to notice here? Now these caps serve very different purposes than the little MLCCs. These are not picofarads, these are microfarads, and these are made for 16 volts or 10 volts or in this case 250 volts DC. Uh, one quick thing to keep in mind is you always want to make sure these caps are discharged before you hook them up to an LCR meter lest you blow it up and in this case we just got it. I don't really want to blow it up. I don't know if you need to uh, do this, but I'm going to. I'm going to power off as I switch over to this other measurement device. And now we've got these little leads hanging off. In fact, I'll put this at a little angle so you can still see. All right, so I'm going to discharge the cap. Negative to negative. Positive to positive. Let's see what this has to say. So it's supposed to be a uh, twenty two hundred microfarad cap. Looks like we're not quite getting that. Let's change the frequency and see. Wow, at ten kilohertz, it thinks it's a resistor. <laughs> oh, I can change modes here. Okay, so now we're measuring series resistance. We're getting 0.56 ohms. As we test at higher and higher frequencies, capacitance goes down. I wonder if we measure closer to the body of the cap, if we'll see that it gets more ideal. Nah, it's about the same. But there is some inductance in the leads, so hey, that's neat. <laughs> D is dissipation factor. <laughs> Almost certainly. Almost certainly that's what the D stands for. And that makes a ton of sense. In 120 hertz. And look at that. 0 0.1 dissipation factor at 120 hertz. So yeah, it looks like this is coming right into spec. And 1,500 is nominal. We're getting 1,519. That is pretty spot on. Really low ESR. Yeah. Let's see if we switch this to resistance mode. Yeah, there you go. Get a more accurate picture of where we're at. Bump up. Yep. Looks like we're still doing okay. ESR, 20 milliohms. Then is 10K where it's going to... Yeah, okay. 
gets mad at us. Well, good news. We've got an even smaller capacitor that is less ideal. ESR at 10 kilohertz. You can probably get dissipation factor. Sure enough. Love it. Oh, look at that. So we can get the parasitic inductance, the parasitic resistance, and the actual capacitance value of this capacitor. But like, this is the point. All right. And then we got the 15 mic. Got that guy in the tweezers. Looks like we're seeing a much smaller parasitic resistance. And if we push this into ductance mode, 14.75 microhenries. Let's bump this down to uh, 10 kilohertz, 15.16. So it looks like it just starts to fall off a little bit, which makes sense because the parasitic effects of this inductor at higher frequencies are naturally going to be more than this tiny one just because the physical construction is bigger. You're going to have more capacitance in those windings. And I bet if we were to switch over to capacitance, that's exactly what we'd see. So why don't we do that? 170 nanofarads? What was the other one? Ah, uh, why did I put that away? So we're at 170 nanofarads. And hopefully this one is less than 100 and Wait, 170? That's what it was? Yeah, 171. No! This one's actually worse. Series capacitance. Well, nanofarad. It's one of them picofarad, was it? Nanofarad, yeah? Okay, well, I stand corrected. That was incorrect but hey that's kind of the point of this meter right i want to measure what it really is now what i think it is now what the data sheet says it is i want to measure what it is in our case we're going to be building some custom inductors and we can like swap in the gapped cores and the ungapped cores and look at how the different gap size affects all oh, the different parameters of it oh that's going to be fun i can't wait and that's going to be a part of our um inductor right now but we're going to be hopefully winding some custom transformers in the near future but speaking of inductors we're going to be evaluating this guy pretty soon and what this is, is a, um, well, I guess you can just read it for yourself. It's a two and a half millihenry, 10 amp inductor. Obviously, this is not made for high frequency. And in fact, it's not even rated for operation at higher frequencies. Okay. And let's, yeah, so it went to inductance as it should. One and a half ohms. <laughs> one and a half ohms? 36 ohms? Uh, yeah, so did I mention this thing wasn't rated <laughs> for AC? <laughs> I think this thing's a laminated core construction. But what in the world? Because if I test the DC resistance. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's awesome. Go from a Q of 18 to 2.4. What does that tell us? Tells us this is still an inductor at high frequency. But it's a lossy inductor. <laughs> so if we want this thing to pass any appreciable kind of power through it, we can expect to need to wind our own inductor. And hey, uh, we've done this in the past. We've actually got all those spare parts. We're ready to go. We've got the ferrite cores and 
<laughs> We've got the inductors and the inductor accessories. Um, yeah, pretty much. So this meter is going to be very helpful where if we want to, say, use an ungapped core versus a core with a small gap versus a, a core with a bigger gap, because of the way the bobbins are wound for our ETD cores, we can basically slot in an ungapped core, take that out, put in a one millimeter gap, put in a two, three millimeter gap, and just compare for the same winding with the same wire, different, same core material, but different gap. We can start to play with some of that and then in real time or relatively real time, measure the new inductor and resistance and quality factor. Well, as long as we're here, as long as we like it, may as well peel off the uh, protective plastic and uh, really add it to the shop. So, hey, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something about inductors or capacitors, or parasitic components. Let me know down in the comments if today's the first day that you realized that your capacitor is a capacitor, an inductor, and a resistor. If today's the first day you learned that, then it's a good day. Welcome to the world of parasitic components. If not, well, drop a comment. We'll uh, talk about it some more down there, I'm sure. Most of all, I hope you learned something great today, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone, and a special shout out to our Patreon members, or our channel members on both Patreon and YouTube. I really appreciate you guys throwing a couple bucks in the hat and um, just deciding to support us. Um, yeah, I think that's just absolutely great, and I uh, always appreciate it. But what am I saying? I am rambling. Ah, whatever.